Being that this video is being produced in the winter of 2020, this is the time that tens of thousands of you from all over the world are starting to plan your RV trip to Western Canada for the spring and the summer. Since I was born here and have traveled up and down the west coast here, I thought it would be a great time to produce an RV travel tips video for you to avoid disappointment, save a few dollars, and have a smoother trip while up here. While I understand this video is seen all over the world, the majority of you will be coming here from the USA and Europe, and even a few from New Zealand and Australia, but probably the American audience might benefit the most from this video. Some of you will be also spending many days in Canada as you RV to Alaska and back. First of all, it probably goes without saying that you will first have to have a passport or an enhanced driver's license to enter Canada. Those days when just a driver's license was fine are long over. Just get one and avoid the disappointment of being refused entry. And if you do have a criminal record or are traveling with someone that does, attempt to get an advanced permit to enter at one of the many Canadian consulates in the USA or you will risk refusal of entry. And unless you're a trusted traveler with hundreds of border crossing experience like I have, expect to be questioned carefully and inspected at the border. Declare all cash over $10,000 in Canadian funds and all weapons. Do not attempt to cross the border with a weapon. You do not have a permit from Canada Customs or you will be arrested. Do not cross the border with firewood or any plants with soil either. We don't want any more pine beetles killing our forests. The rules are there for a reason, folks. Trust me, you want to keep your country safe, we want to keep our country safe too. Now that all that is sorted out, let's talk logistics. First of all, Canada has expensive fuel, so make sure you fill all your fuel and propane tanks at one of the border towns before you cross the border. You will thank me for that tip. And while you're at it, buy your alcohol, cigarettes, milk and cheese. Those items are also very expensive here in Canada. Speaking of fuel prices, do not buy fuel in metropolitan Vancouver if you can avoid it, as it has more taxes and is more expensive. So buy your fuel outside Vancouver when coming into the city or leaving and save a few bucks. But before you even think about arriving here, make 100% sure you have taken the time to pre-book your campsites. You will often be disappointed if you do not, as summer camping is very popular here in Western Canada and many places will be full, especially on every weekend and on every long weekend that has a provincial or national holiday. Be especially careful to book your campsites for the May Victoria Day long weekend and Canada Day weekend in July and BC Day weekend in British Columbia in August and everywhere on Labor Day in September. I cannot stress this more strongly as you have a very high probability of having nowhere to camp if you do not make advanced reservations for these holiday weekends. If this does happen to you, do not despair. You can camp on the side of the road for the odd night if you are outside of the cities and in the wilderness. Do not expect to camp alongside any roads in any of the larger cities without getting a possible knock on the door by the police. And this includes Walmarts. More and more Walmarts are not allowing urban camping in Canada, just as in the USA. So do your research and look for signs, whether it's allowed or not. When it comes to paying for things, do not use your American currency in Canada, as this is one of the biggest scams by not giving you a fair currency exchange. As of today, you should receive around 30% of a premium on your US dollar when in Canada. Of course, the rates change every day. You can check the internet for whatever the currency exchange rate is at your time. Remember, there's always a buy and sell spread. So the price to buy Canadian currency and sell currency is always different and they usually have a spread of anywhere between 4 to 5%. Many businesses will take your US dollars, but will only pay you par or maybe a 10 or 15% premium. This is absolutely not fair. So do not get ripped off and do not spend US dollars in Canada. Withdraw cash from your bank account at any ATM cash machine in Canada or use your credit card for a fair exchange. You can exchange any unused Canadian cash at your bank when you return home or just keep it for your next trip.
When traveling in British Columbia, do not underestimate travel times, as many roads are winding and mountainous with large changes in elevation, and there are no freeways outside of the large cities. Try to travel during the daylight hours and keep your headlights on during the day. And remember, if you're caught speeding over 40 kilometers an hour, that's 25 miles per hour, over the posted speed limit in British Columbia, you will have your vehicle seized for seven days and you will pay for all the expenses involved in the seizure. So don't let that happen to you. And learn some metric. It's not that hard. The entire world uses it. While camping, remember to never leave any food or garbage outside, or you will awaken to a big mess made by the raccoons, crows, and bears, and you're going to have to clean it up. Or worse, you will meet a very hungry bear that wants to be your very best friend. And a fed bear is a dead bear, so don't force us to kill another bear because you decided to feed it for an Instagram picture. Don't be that guy. And speaking of bears, I know many of you city slickers are afraid of them, but don't despair. Most bears are also afraid of you. If you want to feel more secure in bear country, buy a big canister of bear spray at a Canadian tire store when you arrive. But odds are high that you probably won't need it. And be prepared for all types of weather from extreme heat to the odd chilly night. Canada has extreme swings in temperature, and you can often run your heater at lunch and your air conditioner at night. Just go with the flow and enjoy it. And do not forget your mosquito spray and sunscreen. The days are very long, and just because you are in Canada does not mean you can't get a good second degree sunburn. And speaking of your health, make sure you have international travel medical insurance. It is cheap to buy at your local AAA office. Canadian medical is not free for tourists. You will get a bill. So avoid that and just get insurance. And while you're at the AAA office, price out an emergency RV towing package that will cover you on your trip. It's cheap and I always carry it. Towing for your RV even once for any distance will be expensive if you have a breakdown. Avoid these costs and just buy a cheap RV towing plan. And while you're at it, make sure your RV is in top shape and your spare tire has air in it. Check your radiator as the long mountainous highways in the Canadian summer heat will give your RV cooling system a rigorous workout. And if you do have any troubles, your cell phone will work in most larger communities, but not on all roads. If you do break down in a remote area, don't be afraid to ask someone to send word of your breakdown and to get you a tow truck. Most people here in Canada will help you without expecting anything in return, so don't worry much about the slim chance of anything bad happening. And as for theft, do not leave valuables in plain view in your vehicle anywhere and always lock your doors when away. Crimes of opportunity can happen anywhere in the world, including Canada. Although I guarantee most people don't have any problems RVing here, but don't tempt fate either. I will leave some links that you may find helpful in the description below, such as for provincial camping reservations and for booking your RV on BC ferries to visit Vancouver Island or the many coastal communities. I am not paid by these links and they are merely there for your information. Create lots of memories, take lots of pictures, and have fun out there here in Western Canada. And as always, keep your wheels on the ground.